A creek has carved a ravine in the ground west of a small settlement in the Slovenian hills, exposing layers of rock and an abundant collection of fossils. There are also plants like sea grasses and leaves from trees like pine and willow preserved along with tiny albae, mollusks, fish, and insects. These Miocene fossils, which are believed to have been created between 11.6 and 12.7 million years ago, depict a shallow bay next to a forest. Researchers discovered that the bay formerly contained a large population of seahorses in the late 2000s. At this location, paleontologists discovered more than 20 seahorse fossils, the earliest ones to date. But what precisely are those seahorses doing there? Today, the majority of Slovenia is not exactly on an ocean front. Additionally, current genomic studies indicate that seahorses did not evolve there. These days, they can be found in every ocean in the world. Seahorses are among the most unusual and fascinating animals that Mother Nature has to offer, as we all know. They are beautiful in particular because of their vibrant colors. An animal that is better equipped to cling to a stalk of coral or a blade of seagrass than swimming great distances may find it difficult to swim in the wide ocean. How then did one of the sea's weakest swimmers go that far? And where did they originally originate from? Before we proceed, kindly return the favor and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe and activate the bell notification feature to stay up to speed with new video publications. The progenitors of seahorses were able to disperse from their Mediterranean-based home range during the Oligocene period, which began 34 million years ago to various regions including Southeast Asia. And this is where plate tectonics comes into the seahorse evolutionary story. The ocean floor surrounding Southeast Asia, particularly Indonesia, has been a complete mess due to plate tectonics for at least the last 55 million years. Near the conclusion of the Oligocene some 25 million years ago, perhaps the most significant change took place. As the Australian plate under what is now New Guinea advanced northward, it collided with the stable southeast point of the enormous European plate, as well as a jumble of plates under what is roughly the current Philippines. And this significant tectonic event created numerous vast, shallow oceans from what had previously been a deep waterway between the continents. And given that being closer to the surface may cause a variety of changes to the bottom, like exposing it to more sunlight, this may have been a significant alteration for the ecosystem there. Corals, which are crucial for seahorses and seagrass, could thrive in these new conditions along with other sorts of life. It was simpler for seagrass to photosynthesize with more sunlight. Local seabed floor might also broaden their range when plate tectonics gradually raised the sea floor. And we might owe the existence of seahorses to these seagrass meadows. According to some scientists, the circumstances in these seagrass beds may have forced the syngnathids to change from a long, straight posture to the upright posture we see in modern seahorses. Seahorses must continually eat because they lack stomachs and teeth. Fortunately for them, they are skilled hunters. The idea that seahorses are predators can be amusing. They have superb eyesight in addition to being incredibly stealthy and silent swimmers. A seahorse may actually hew both backwards and forwards at once because each eye can move independently of the others. Small fish and crustaceans are among their food and they track them down and sneak up on them before sucking them up via their snout like a vacuum cleaner. Seahorses can actually strike farther and faster when they're standing up and seahorses may alter their color thanks to chromatophores, unique structures in their skin cells. When escaping from predators like crabs or sneaking up on their own prey by quickly pulling them into their mouths, seahorses use camouflage, the ability to blend into their surroundings. As part of a dance of greeting with their spouse, they may also alter their color. Additionally, if they had lost their long, pointy tail in favor of a prehensile one, they might have been able to grab onto the seagrass rather than just drift close to it. They can save energy and stop constantly trending water to stay still thanks to this. Seahorse DNA supports the seabrass hypothesis even though there are no fossils to support this transition. For instance, it appears that the ancestors of seahorses diverged from other close cousins at about the same time that the seagrass beds first appeared or about 25 million years ago. 
And when we examine the genetic makeup of various species, we discover that the oldest and most diversified lineages originate in the region that is now Indonesia. This implies that this is where they got their start. Therefore, it appears that an ecology produced by plate tectonics may have allowed early syngnathids, which resemble pipefish, to evolve into seahorses. Although it may be simple to think of the ocean as a single biome, it is actually made up of a variety of them, including the open ocean, reefs, and coastal shallows. Geologic activity can significantly alter these regions, much like it can change biomes on land, in this instance by affecting factors like light levels, currents, and creating new habitats. And a fresh habitat alone may be enough to spur an established lineage to assume novel and occasionally bizarre shapes. Although the Oliveocene seagrass beds may help to explain how seahorses initially came to be, the question of how they traveled from South Asia to the rest of the world still has to be answered. Well, it appears that plate tectonics is also responsible for this. Seahorses are excellent rafters, but not terrific swimmers. They can use their tails to grip on the clumps of seagrass or seaweed that are trudging through ocean currents. And by studying the genomes of living species, we can track their spread. Their genetics indicate that they initially traveled westward with the current from Southeast Asia. Currently, this plan will only get them as far as Africa's east coast before they would need to turn south and go around the Cape of Good Hope, which is doable and some later lineages may have done, but it's challenging. Though it turns out that the first seahorses didn't have to. Because Africa and Eurasia have not yet clashed, a passageway has been left for them to pass through. Seahorses were able to go directly into the Atlantic Ocean as well as back to the homeland of the Singnathids through the now-closed Tethys Seaways, which were a form of Proto-Mediterranean. They may then use a series of seahorse shortcuts to raft across the Atlantic and into the chasms separating North and South America to access the Eastern Pacific. From where they came from in the seagrass beds of Southeast Asia to where they are now after traveling the world. The tectonic plate movements of our planet have influenced the evolution of seahorses. And although we frequently consider how they affect the lives of animals on land, they also have a significant impact on the patterns of diversity we observe in our oceans. Therefore, seahorses would never have been able to rule the Earth if it weren't for plate tectonics. And now, let us hear from you in the comments section below. Keep in mind that more videos will be up soon. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date with new video alerts. Also, sharing indicates you want to see our content reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.